The UAE will launch its first nuclear reactors by the end of this year. And by 2032, Saudi Arabia is planning to have 16 reactors in place to supply a whopping 17.6 gigawatts. The Middle East is going nuclear. What do we know about nuclear energy and its safety? Is terrorism a threat? What are risks for such a program and what are the benefits? Al Arabiya speaks to Director General of the UAE Federal Authority for Nuclear Regulation, Christer Victorson, to know more. The role of a nuclear regulator is uh, to ensure the safety, security and non-proliferation of the use of radiation and nuclear in the country. And in all countries using radiation and nuclear, there is a regulator. And the role is pretty much similar. And other than ensuring the safety, non-proliferation, mm -hmm. where do the standards come from? Where are they set from? So the role of the regulator is to set standards, uh, to issue licenses, and to inspect the compliance with the licenses. In our case, for the Federal Authority for Nuclear Regulation in UAE, we have used uh, the IAEA safety standards as a basis. But not only, we have also used other um, uh, regulators' frameworks for, for, for regulation in order to make sure we follow the best international practice. And is this the reason why the UAE is rated as the gold standard? That is part of the reason. Another part is that we have uh, pursuing transparency all around, all, all, all along the, the development of the program and the regulatory. Of course, that is a challenge for a, a new country establishing nuclear. You have to have a lot of infrastructure element in place. Yeah. So the regulatory framework is one, but you have to have an industrial framework as well. You have to have uh, a lot of international relations. You need to sign conventions, agreements, in order to ensure that you are intending to do it in a safe manner, provide the security to the, to the population, and to make sure to, to you do it in a peaceful manner. Um, nuclear power today provides a significant part of energy uh, in many, many countries. And we have today 440 reactors in operation in 30 countries and they are providing a very re reliable source of electricity. It is not up to Federal Authority for Nuclear Regulation though to decide whether UAE should have electricity from nuclear or not. But once the government decides to go nuclear, it is our role to make sure it's done in a safe way to make sure we can benefit from the nuclear power in a reliable way for many, many years. It is understandable that people are, have uh, many, many questions about nuclear. Um, it is related to radiation, it is re related to accidents, uh, but it's also related to, to very beneficial uh, use. So we are here uh, as an accessory component to ensure the safety. Um, we are here to also to, to explain what is radiation uh, and how we contain the radiation, how we uh, regulate it. So we have applied the best international practice. So we are using safety standards that have been developed through experience and become a wisdom, I would say, internationally. And those have been embedded in the, in the system of the UAE. Here we get radiation from many sources, from the atmosphere, when you fly, for example. Although a flight to US or Japan doesn't give too much, it is more for the, profession, for the occupational exposure for, for flight attendant and pilots that it's, there is some concern and there is some regulations in some countries to, to make sure that nobody uh, is, is suffering from that. Um, so that is uh, one, one source of radiation. We get radiation from the ground because there is uranium and there is radium in, in many countries that, that emits and, and come into the buildings and it's part of the day-to-day -day life.
And it is, it's negligible radiation? Yes, it's very... You have, of course, to know, and, and part of FANR's responsibility is to measure. So we are doing now a baseline monitoring of the radioactivity levels in the UAE, which has not been done before, okay. and we are going to publish those reports very soon. So okay. the main threat is an accident. Uh, we have seen some accidents, big accidents in the world, including Fukushima and Chernobyl. Uh, but there are ways and means to prevent that from happening. Uh, we have done a lot of work at FANR to understand the reasons behind those accidents and to make sure we implement measures to prevent it. So that is one, one source of anxiety. Another could be terrorists. Uh, uh, that come and want to, to damage the power plant and in that way spread ra radioactivity. For that reason we have uh, strong security systems around the plant. We have connections with the security agencies to make sure that we are prepared even for those things. Of course we have the long-term generation of nuclear waste which was also considered in the government policy when they decided, or before they decided to go nuclear in UAE, they already thought about how to deal with the waste coming from the operation of Barak. So a nuclear power plant generates uh, essentially two types of waste. It's low level waste, which comprises uh, clou clothes that get contaminated, tools, uh, and, and then high level radioactive waste, which is the spent nuclear fuel. Yeah. So the nuclear reactor is operating by uh, uranium heating water, which then produce steam and, pro uh, and, and generate, uh, make the generator rotate uh, and produce electricity. This um, uranium fuel is, lasts for some 18 months then you need to recharge or reload the, the reactor core. You stop the reactor for some months, you take out the used fuel, you put it in, 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 in water pools next to the reactor, mm -hmm. uh, and then you put it in, in new fuel in the reactor and restart again. So we reviewed the site investigation. The, the INEC provided us with a comprehensive site review, site investigation where they had done this research and development and for a rather they, long time. That's when they did their own assessment. Exactly. And then they sent it to us uh, as part of the application to, to start construction. We, m we went through uh, that from many points of view, uh, particularly from sighting, uh, I mean from, from seismic. Uh, we we uh, looked at the risk of flooding. We looked at the risk of tsunamis. We looked at how could sandstorm influence the safety of the nuclear power plant. Uh, what was interesting in this um, review that we went through was that in the middle of our review of the, of the site and the construction, the Fukushima accident happened. So we were immediately faced with potential risks that could threaten a nuclear power plant, namely seismic risk, flooding, tsunami. On this side of the Gulf, there is no risk really of, of big seismic events. It's different on the other side, but on this side, uh, there is the, the risks are very minimal. What the risk of tsunami, tsunami yes. is the same. Uh, this is a limited amount of water that we are talking about in the Arabian Gulf. Uh, we have the Hormuz um, Strait, mm -hmm. which, could, which would prevent also or limit the effect of a possible tsunami coming from the Atlantic or from the o ocean. Okay. Yeah, there are certain rules for that as well, because we don't want to have big towns immediately neighboring a nuclear power plant, because there is always a small, small risk of an accident. So, but. That was part of our, our review of, the, of, of this Baraka site. There was no uh, big site, a big city next to the Baraka.